you start hearing the environment you're recording in more and more when you get further along in what you're doing and you start realizing that the environment is, in my opinion, more important than the actual gear. It's the way the room sounds, you start hearing that. My name is Kevin Agunis, and we are here at my studio, Fairfax Recordings, uh, formerly Sound City. I produce records, record records for people. Um, I run a record label out of here. My first studio experiences were as a bass player, going into plan sessions with people, and, and I would be uh, very curious in how the record was being made or recorded. Um, I was touring quite a bit in the mid-early 90s, and I was getting more enjoyment out of staying in one place, making records. The travel was great, but it, artistically and creatively, I was finding I was having more fun being at home and recording demos for other bands and friends and working on other projects like that. From there, it, again, it turned into collecting gear, building a little studio in my apartment, recording stuff there. Um, you know, even when I was younger, I had a four track, which those always sounded incredible. Then I went through this crazy process of trying to experience everything, and at some point you end up with a ton of gear and um, which is fine and you're, you're learning about how things work and experimenting with them and then I, you start coming down the backside, um, or at least I did to where I could start identifying what worked for me and what didn't everybody's aware of brands now especially in audio equipment whereas when I started you were in a band you really didn't even know what a console was much less the name of it or the model number now everybody knows just about everything everybody you know, and there's catchphrases like Neve and API and so on and so forth. So now bands are walking into studios going like, so what are you going to put on my vocals? And I want to kind of say like, don't worry about it. Just worry about singing and writing a song. That's what you need to be thinking about. I started getting rid of stuff too that, that had more just name brand to it because people would have these crazy expectations of the gear as opposed to having expectations of themselves and of their art, which was kind of more important. I've worked here a handful of times over the past 15 years uh, when it was a commercial studio. I'd come here and uh, cut drums for records, things like that. This was known as a great drum room, which it is. Um, so I was friendly with the owners and uh, about five or six years ago, a close friend of mine who works here a lot too came to me. I think I saw him out one day. He's like, did you know Sound City's available? No, and I was looking for a new spot. And where the studio is, is you know, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere in the valley. So it's, you know, it's not like renting a studio in Hollywood, which would be much more expensive. But I wanted this room so bad and wanted the sound of it that it kind of worked out. I mean, some great records have been made here for sure. I mean, crazy great records have been made here. But um, uh, I didn't come in because of any specific record. I just, the sound of the room is incredible. There's never a moment where you're not trying to solve a problem. And that the word problem doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It's just you're constantly creating, trying to figure something out. Um, it keeps your brain going. It's, it's fun. It's like a, you know, it's a big puzzle. Um, and, if, and if you're not problem solving, I, honestly, I think something's wrong. Like if you're just <laughs> cruising along, you're not doing the best you can. Like you should, always, you should always be finding something you can improve upon in the recording process. And so, yeah, it's, to me, that's super exciting. And that's kind of life, you know? It's, if you're not in the moment and moving forward and trying to figure things out,